Good try, Jazz. Oh, you said it was clear. Oh my goodness. That was a good spot. Maybe I have to go with a few other spots. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's clear. <laughs> <laughs> Eight minutes, you got two Eight. minutes left. Well, this is like the last room. Yeah. <laughs> 
So first question is to tell us about yourself. So basically, um, my name is Sebastian Raffo. Um, I am half Mauritian, half Australian. So my dad is Mauritian and my mum is Australian. I am 17 years old and I'm in year, in year 11. I have a sister, two years younger than me. I, I love to read fantasy and sci-fi novels. I also love to watch TV shows and movies that are fantasy and sci-fi. Um, and I'm a musician, so I play saxophone and piano. Well, when I watched the movie Harriet, which is about Harriet Tubman, um, that was just very profound for me, um, because it's about Harriet Tubman, who played a, an important role in the Underground Railroad for, um, to free slaves in America. Um, and just because, just, um, just her, her story, because she was a slave herself and then when she was free, she could have easily gone off, done her own thing and lived a very peaceful life, free of any pain, suffering, just like lived a great life by herself. But no, she knew there was something wrong, so she wanted to fix it, she wanted to change it. And just that for me, that was very, very inspiring. And yet, yeah, um, and throughout the movie, you just get to see that that story just come to life in front of you. My favorite character in the Bible is Moses, actually. Um, so he was, he was cast away by his birth mother, thrown into the river, and then he drifted off in a basket. And then eventually he was picked up and he was raised. And then, yep, he was, he was, he, he seemed like he was a very insignificant person, despite, you know, the story, right? Um, but then he ended up freeing slaves and he did it because God asked him and he was like, okay. And that was the end of it. Like he didn't, he didn't question, question his plan. He was like, okay, yep. And he asked for help when he needed it. And it's also just a reminder that anyone can can be um, can be used by God to change his world. Really, because like even if you're even if you if even if you yourself feel like you're not in a position to do so, he can use you in, ex in extraordinary ways, which you can never never fathom until it is done. So yeah, Moses. Ah, yes, there was a time. Um, well, when I first came to Spark, actually, because um, beforehand I hadn't come to youth before, so I was like, oh yeah, it was just like a bunch of people, yeah, gonna pray, gonna sing some songs, have, play some games, that's that's basically the end of it, that was like my perception of it, so I just went to see what it was like. But yeah, it was actually, it was very, like, eye-opening, like, especially in Spark Life, man, um, like, I could, like, feel it, just, just, the group of people around me, they all truly loved God, and that was like, wow, for me anyway. So that was, I was able to, um, yeah, just, just see God's um, power. And then 
grow my own faith with him, and I could just feel God calling me to, to, to just um, really not to resent the time I'm, I'm, I'm spending with you guys that's far. It was just a good time to, to grow the faith, to grow my faith, and yeah, that's when I knew God was, was truly, truly real, um, and, and that he cares about me, that he put me in a position with all these caring and um, good people. <laughs> I'm passionate about um, protecting God's creation, so people, animals, and the environment. Because there is so much beauty in each and every one of them. You can't look at that beauty and not want to do, um, not want to ensure its survival and ensure that it thrives. Um, And lastly, what's one thing you want everyone at Spa Youth to know? Well, one thing I would want everyone at Spa to know is just to... Just don't worry. Like, I know this is a very difficult time. Very confusing, strange even. But like, just to not worry. Because we can't forget that God is with us, right? He, he has unlimited power. For one, his mercy is endless and his love is like everlasting, right? So because of that, how can we ever worry about the next day, right? So I just want to remind you all to not worry, to, um, to, to just trust in his power and to just never forget that he's looking out for you. Hey Spark Youth, it's great to be back with you on another Spark Online on a Friday night. Thanks Seb for sharing on our Spark Spotlight segment. It was great to hear more about you. And now we're going to hear from Pastor Tracy. Hey Spark Youth, great to be with you tonight. If you saw Spark Youth Online last time, you would have seen our Spark Spotlight segment featuring Alana. Now, Alana shared on her Instagram series that she created called You Are, which of course is talking about who we are in Christ. So when I was preparing for tonight, I felt that God was prompting me to share with you guys a message that I shared about five or six months ago on a Sunday morning at church. And this message is about our identity and how who we are influences the world around us. So, as I've mentioned before, as a child and throughout my growing up years, I was constantly told that I was no good, that I'd never amount to anything, nothing that I did was ever good enough, and that everything was my fault, and that basically I was a joke. And I grew up believing those things and feeling that those things were true. And that's a really heavy burden for anyone to bear, let alone a child. So it probably comes as no surprise that my feelings of self-worth, my self-esteem and my identity were a complete mess for many, many years. We all have a story and those things that have caused us pain, the things that others have done to us or that we have maybe done to others, the things which life has thrown at us, which seem really, really unfair and that we don't understand and that just seem too much to bear, could very well be the things that God wants to use and has allowed us to go through so that we can influence the world around us, speak life into a broken world and bring him glory. You know that there is an anointing and an authority to speak into areas and to speak into things that we have been through ourselves and have overcome. For as long as I can remember, I have always wanted to work with broken and hurting young people and children. I've always wanted to be the person for them that I wish that someone had been for me while I was growing up. I wanted to do this so badly as my paid vocation that there were times when I thought that I would burst. I didn't know when it would happen, I didn't know if God was ever going to cause it to come to pass, 
but in his great wisdom and in his timing, he did. Looking back, I know now that if he had given me what I wanted when I wanted it, there's no way I would have been ready for it and the whole thing would have been a complete and utter disaster. So just because something that you're waiting for, something that you're believing is going to happen hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean that it isn't going to happen and that God isn't going to bring it to pass in his timing. So I'd like to have a look at the story of Esther. So the story of Esther tells us that when the king was looking for a new queen, he chose Esther. Now, Esther was a Jew, but she kept her identity hidden from the king at the behest of Mordecai, and who had brought Esther up as his own daughter after her parents had died. So the Bible tells us that every day Mordecai walked to and fro near the courtyard to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. Now, the king had this evil advisor called Haman, and Haman convinced the king to have all the Jews in the region executed on the one day. Mordecai, who was a Jew, prevailed upon Esther to intercede before the king. So, what Esther did was that she invited the king and Haman to a private party, and then she invited them both to a second party. Haman decided to erect the gallows on which to hang Mordecai because the Bible tells us that Mordecai refused to bow down to him. The Bible goes on to tell us that Mordecai overheard a plot to kill the king and he told this to Esther, who reported it to the king. Now, the king was unable to sleep. He was pretty distressed about hearing this report. And that night, he was reminded that he had never rewarded Mordecai for saving his life. The king asked Haman to parade Mordecai around the town, dressed him in royal clothing and riding on the king's own horse. Can you imagine how annoyed and angry Haman must have been at the king's request? I mean, Mordecai was basically like his mortal enemy, and here the king was asking Haman to honour him and reward him when the whole time Haman was wanting to kill him. Haman must have been so angry. So I mentioned that Esther invited the king and Haman to a second party. Now at the second party, Esther told the king that Haman wanted to exterminate her people. So the Bible tells us that the king was enraged and subsequently he had Haman strung up on the gallows that Haman had prepared for the Jews. A key point in this story is when Mordecai prevailed upon Esther to intercede before the king on the behalf of the Jews. Because remember, the king wasn't aware that Esther was a Jew. And Esther, she wasn't overly keen to do this because any man or any woman who approached the king in the inner court without being summoned was put to death. You know, Mordecai's response to her fears was to tell her that if she remained silent at this time, relief and deliverance from the Jews would come from another place, but she and her family and her father's family would perish. And now here's the point where if Mordecai had a mic, he would have done a mic drop. And we read this in Esther chapter 4, verse 14. Perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created. Perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created. So just sit with that verse for a moment and just reflect on it. Perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created. Think about that verse in the context of your life, your circumstances, your situation, what you're going through at the moment. Perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created. How will that verse change the way you view your life, your interactions with others, what you've been through? Does it change your perspective at all? 
So I encourage you to meditate on this verse over the coming weeks. Perhaps this is the moment that, for which you have been created. You know, like with Esther's story, we already know how it ends. But while Esther was living it, she had no idea what would happen. She had no idea if the king would have her put to death. But she stepped out in faith on the words that Mordecai had spoken over her. And that's what it's like for us. We don't always know how things are going to turn out. We don't know um, what things are going to transpire and sometimes life takes us by surprise. This year is a classic example of life taking us by surprise. And through this time, we must remember to live in faith and that nothing takes God by surprise. We might be flawed by the events that go on around us and in our own personal lives, but nothing takes God by surprise. But sometimes our past experiences cause us to be fearful and to start to believe that it's all too hard and that we're better off playing it safe. Whether we realise it or not, our past experiences do affect the way we see our current situation and how we feel about the future. You know, maybe there are times when you've actually thought that you're too young, that you're not good enough, you've got nothing to offer, that you can't do that. Maybe you're just simply afraid of stepping out or maybe you're afraid of failing, that you've got too many limitations. You know, the list goes on and on and on. But you know what? The enemy has spent many years observing you. From the moment you were born, he has been observing you. He's been strategizing against you. He's been learning what your hotspots are, whispering his lies into your ears and trying to paralyze you and render you ineffective. And because he is so deceitful and he is the father of lies, sometimes, and, some, and we don't even realize that it's happening, we're listening to him and we're believing the lies that he is telling us. You know, he's, maybe he's told you that you're too damaged, that you're too broken, that your sins are too great and that you're so bad that God's grace couldn't possibly cover you. That his grace and forgiveness is for everybody else in the world except you. That he doesn't love you and that if people knew who you really are and how bad you really are, that you would be rejected, judged and shamed. He's told you that you have to be perfect. He's told you that you have to live up to certain expectations, that you're not allowed to fail. He's putting pressure on you from all different angles. And sometimes we just don't realise that that's where it's coming from. Do you know what? I'm speaking from experience here. I've listened to the devil's lies more times than I can count. And I've believed him and I have felt paralysed and I have felt like a fraud and all of those things that I listed before, I've heard those lies and I've given in to them. But you know what? And this is something, if you don't remember anything else that I've spoken about tonight, remember this. The devil is a liar. Let me say that again. The devil is a liar. And right where you are um, watching this, I want you to say out loud, the devil is a liar liar. I cannot emphasize that enough. The devil's a liar. We are in a spiritual battle. The devil doesn't let up for a moment. So we must be constantly on our guard against him. We can't let him have any footholds, not even for a moment. But you know what? We have already won the battle because Jesus defeated death, sin and the grave when he went to the cross for us. So Ephesians chapters 1 and 2 outline the spiritual blessings that we have as children of God. And Lana touched on some of these in her You Are series. Ephesians 2 focuses on the grace extended to us because of God's mercy and his love for us, his kindness and his grace, even though we have done nothing to deserve it. So let me read some of these blessings to you 
And I encourage you to have a good read and study of Ephesians 1 and 2. I encourage you to make those two chapters the focus of your soaps over the coming weeks. So here are these blessings. Spiritual blessing. Chosen. Holy and blameless. We're adopted. We've been redeemed. Forgiven. We have purpose. We have hope. Salvation. Faith. We are God's handiwork. We are created to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. We have been bought by the blood of Jesus. Yes, you, you've been bought by the blood of Jesus. We are part of God's family. We are the dwelling place where God lives. We, are, we have been sealed with his seal. We have an inheritance. We have wisdom and revelation strength, love, mercy, grace. And one that I really, really love is that we are seated in heavenly places with Jesus. We have promise, peace, reconciliation and freedom. Doesn't that list just about blow your mind? The devil can't take those promises away. God has given us those promises and the devil can't take them away from us, but he can try and make us ineffective. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, declares the Lord. You are not here by accident. When Next time you're looking at yourself in a mirror, I want you to have a good hard look at your face and say out loud to your reflection, I am not here by accident. And the very thing that the devil uses to try and keep you down could well be the very thing that God wants to use to increase your influence to bring healing and comfort to others and to display his glory. So I feel like that God is prompting some of you to step out of your comfort zone and allow him to increase your influence. You know, some of you need a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit so that you can begin to see yourself the way he sees you and begin to believe that you have something to offer, that there is something in your story which God can use to extend your influence further than you could ever imagine. Some of you may need to shift your perspective and reflect on what it means for you to have been created for this moment. Some of you, some of you just need to stop simply doing life and going through the motions and start seeing every aspect of your life as part of God's incredible plan and an opportunity to influence those around you for his glory. And I believe that God can do this even in the midst of lockdown. Just because we aren't get, living life the way we normally live doesn't mean that God's influence comes to a stop. You know, all that you need is an open and obedient heart and a willingness to step out as the Holy Spirit leads you. A willingness to be vulnerable and transparent when necessary. If that means that someone's life will be changed by your story. I recently released a book um, about my life and about my journey through this whole identity um, situation and learning who I really am and you know recognizing the lies of the devil and how to overcome that because I really want and believe that God wants to use my story to make a difference in somebody else's life and to bring him glory and he wants to do the same thing with you all those things that you felt that you're ashamed of that you don't want to talk about that you don't want to acknowledge God can use all those things to show his glory, 
his love, his redemption, his compassion from what he has done through you, what you have overcome to bring glory to his name and to influence the world around you. So just think on this. Perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created. Let's pray. Father, I feel that there are quite a number of young people listening to my voice now and some of what I have said really resonates with them. There are some who are really struggling with feeling like they need to be perfect and that the expectations on them are, are great and they must not fail. There are some that feel that they have just stuffed up too badly and that you can't ever forgive them and that their lives aren't worth anything. There are some that just feel like they don't have anything to offer, that they're not good enough, that they don't know what it is that you want them to do. Father, I pray for your peace to be upon those whose hearts are troubled, whose spirits are un not at ease. And Lord, I pray that you speak to each one of those hearts that are yearning for you, that don't feel your presence, that don't feel that you're close. For those who have been listening too long to the lies of the devil, Lord, I pray that your truth will break through where the devil has been sowing seeds of his lies and his deceit and his discouragement. Lord, I pray that from this moment onwards that each person who has heard your voice, who has heard your call, will turn their attention and their focus to you, that they will constantly stay in communion with you and that you will teach them to be able to differentiate as clearly as anything the difference between the lies of the devil and what you say about them. Lord, I pray that your truth and that your identity, the identity that we have as ch your children, will become a reality for every single person who hears this message. Lord, I pray for your blessing upon Spark Youth. I pray for every single young person who attends. I thank you for them, Lord, and I thank you that there is so many wonderful things that you want to do in and through them and that each one of their stories will be used for the glory of your kingdom. And in your precious name we pray. Amen. For this is the time that you guys have been created. How awesome is that? God's got some amazing plans for you guys and we just can't wait to see them unfold throughout the years. So guys, as normal, we're here for any prayers or any needs that you have. Just um, send us a message. And don't forget, next week is Spark Life. We look forward to catching you then. Bye.